welcome to another episode of Review Corner. Jason here again, and today I'm reviewing I Bet I'd Sky by Indie and Alternative Band Dinosaur Jr. Alright, so this album was from, from 2012, so last year. It is their 10th studio album. Some background information on the artist Dino, Dinosaur Jr., now called or was called Dinosaur, it formed Massachusetts after a long run from 1985 when their first album came out called Dinosaur to 1987 with different members. The original members. Um, they they broke up and the the original members reformed again in 2005 and since then they have released three albums. All right, lead singer Jay Ma- Maskus quick snappy whining um, vocals mixed with mixed with a distorted distinct um, guitar sound bring the listener to, and me and I, this is very happy to f- to figure this out back to the elements of the 1960s and 70s. This is this is. Which was characterized by distortion, a lot of feedback in the in the music, a lot of heavy pedal work, a lot of different pedal work than what we see today. Very very good um, overall. And this this concept was highly influent, influential in the underground like alternative rock movement of the 90s um, with with bands like Green Day and Nirvana and Pearl Jam and all these bands popping up and. Dinosaur Jr. was just the start of this. One of my friends here told me yesterday that Dinosaur Jr. kind of reminded him of, of Pearl Jam in a way. I can definitely see that because of similar vocal, vocal tones from Jay, Jay Mascus. I hear a lot of Beach Boys influence in it as far as the mellow, relaxed feel to the music, the California mellow, you know, chilled out sound. Um, and, of course, I hear a little bit of Rolling Stones with the hard guitar um, work and the influence involved in that. So... Um, there's a whole bunch of different influences back and forth, but for sure a good band, a good album for sure. All right, now on to the track review. Um, there are 10 tracks, about 45 minutes long as a CD. And the first the first song is Pretend You Don't Know. Um, I love the guitar, the distorted guitar work, a very mellow sounding song. Very, it breaks, it, it's mellow sounding, but then it breaks into a rock ballad with a punk feel to it, a quick chorded um, song. The vocals are awesome. The, the drum work is phenomenal throughout this whole album, and this is just that's that's just the start of it. All right, the uh, second track here is "Watch the Corners." It's actually the first song I heard off the album. Um, I was watching a previous review on YouTube, and the, and the guy had said, "Oh, watch the music video because it's very interesting." So I watched the music video, and the music video itself. I'll give you some background on that. Is it's about a girl who is secretly cheating on her boyfriend at her work and the interesting part of this video is they don't show the guy's face so you're sitting there throughout the whole video wondering who is this guy who is this guy and finally at about maybe the three to four minute mark I forget how long the video is but they they finally expose his face and it's just it's a, it's a good concept for a video and you know the good good editing work and all this I will put the link to the video below but overall um, I like the hard rock feeling of this song that includes the vocal work on the opening riff for sure. Just a hard strumming. Um, and the solo in the middle of it is awesome. The uh, catchy vocals, of course, this is, I've had, when I first listened to this, I had this song in my head for days and days. Awesome. And um, like I said, it's a great song. First first song I heard off the album. I would definitely check this song out if you, if you don't want to check out the whole album. All right, third song is Almost Fair. Uh, I like the melodic instrumental work. The vocals are awesome. Still a lot of like rock influence, like I said, with Rolling Stones and maybe you know maybe some other guy, other influences in there. Excellent guitar solo as well. Um, the overall song beat, you know, the it's it's very catchy. It'll be stuck in your head for days on end. All right, the uh, fourth song here is "Stick a Toe In." Um, the song is extremely catchy vocally. I like the jamming sound. So, sounds a, a little bit like Pearl Jam, I'd say, or a little OAR at points. Um, overall, I could see the song being played on the radio or going mainstream, you know, on like the top, maybe not the top 40 stations, but the al- alternative radio stations. I'm not sure if it has gone yet. Um, I love the, just the guitar's ending solo is just awesome. All right, the uh, fifth song here is uh, Rude. Love the fast, muffled punk sound of the vocals it's just something different very kind of 80s or 70s 80s inspired with the punk it was still a lot of rock as it kind of kicks goes punk and then kicks into rock and you know has great solos and all this i would definitely check this song out as well all right yeah the, the sixth song here is 
I know it's all so well, and I like the distorted pop feel. The instrumental work is awesome. Jay's vocals um, kind of remind me of a John Mayer at the beginning, beginning of the song, not, not necessarily throughout the whole thing, but just the beginning. Another, it's just a jam out song. It's just you know you're sitting there having a good time. You're just gonna you're just gonna have free you're just gonna free uh, free write free play. And I like the cowbell effect to it. If you listen to the end of it, you'll you'll hear that mixed with the guitar solo. It's just something different. Something it caught my ear for sure. All right, the seventh song here is "Pierce the Morning Rain." I love the explosive rockingness to this song. Very in your face, very catchy. Uh, maybe like a, Nir a Nirvana type of sound thing at, at points. Um, another jamming out song. And this is one of the songs I was reading a review. And people were saying, oh, the tempo of the song could be better. Jay's voice could be better. You know, he could he could use his voice to to exceed better. I don't necessarily agree. I like this whole album to begin with, but I think his his vocal range was good on this album. I think I think it fits in pretty good. All right, the eighth song here is what what was that? Oh, it's a straight rocker, a darker tone to the song, the lyrics also as well. Um, the quick corded early punk feel, kind of like the Ramones and all those guys, um, it kind of it kind of brings me back to the to the late '60s, early '70s jam sessions with the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, you know, the Who, and all, all these bands just having a good old time, and kind of kind of reminds me of some some of that a little bit. Um, it's a slower, it's a more focused song on the album, but I, I love the ending and the guitar battle at the end the, the guitar and the drum battle at the end it just it another thing that catches your eye very unique all right the uh, ninth song here is recognition um it's, i like the quick vocals to the song instrumental work is awesome kind of oar-esque with the vocals um the mixture between punk and rock really drew me in and the guitar work is awesome all right and the uh, finally the 10th song is see see it on your side what a way to just finish the album. What, what can I say? It's a straight rocker again. The the guitar work is awesome, especially on the ending solo. Just if you, I would listen to this first, this last song, and the second song. Um, it, that's all you want to listen to in this album because it it's a straight rocker. The guitar solo. If you if you want to become a guitarist, you should listen to this solo. It can it kind of is a very heavy metal sounding solo. Um, overall, it's a darker sounding track, a very cranberry zombie like. I love the cranberries, love that song. Um, so I was happy to happy to see that, and just just the overall vocals and the the overall opening to the song, especially, is just killer. And it's one of my favorite songs on the album. All right, so I would say that this album, this band, could be considered a, co a cross genre band, not only because of the punk, but the indie feel, maybe the pop feel. Um, it's very rough sounding vocals, could lend itself to the grunge genre as well. Well, the hard rocking vocals could just be pure rock, you know, what we're used to, what I'm used to reviewing and what, what I'm, you know, we guys are used to hearing from me. All right, overall, I like this album. It's extremely unique from anything I reviewed. Uh, after listening to this album at first, I, I was a little iffy about it because I, I wasn't sure what to expect. But I found that it's it was hard to compare this band, Dinosaur Jr., to any other band that I've listened to and any, any other band that I think I've heard. Um, which is a great thing for sure. They can, they should keep doing that. Um, I love the raw kind of garage, you know, rock feel to it, the punk feel to it for sure. Early, early sixties and seventies, like I said before, um, with mixed with the distorted instruments and Jay's whining, but calming voice. Um, it, it which I, which seems to get better from the age when I, I, I listened to their last album farm and it's still there, but it's not as, it's not as mature. So, you know, I have something to think about there. Um, and if you're just a fan of, of indie or rock music or rock music or just a fan of music in general, I'd say, you'll love this record. It's something different. I would definitely check it out. You know, um, if you're looking for new music like I was when I first heard this record, definitely check this out. My, re my review for this album, though, would be a 9.5 out of 10 only because there are some songs on here that are a little too slow. Maybe, maybe I was wrong about the tempo. A little bit, but uh, but then the, and the songs do seem a little similar after a while. If you know, if you listen to the whole thing back to back to back, it's about if you listen to 43 minutes straight, you will you'll be able to tell that. But other, other than that, I would definitely check this album 